from Ladette to Lady, from I'm a Celebrity, get me out of here, from one of the most loved and talented chefs and one of my, I'm going to say it, craziest bonkers friends. Please welcome to the Lavoie Live, it's Rosemary Schrager. Where Hello! Oh, I'm so excited. I'm here with my champagne. Fabulous. Look, I got mine. A bit of Bolly. And, oh, a bit of bolly. It's, it's got and it's in a mixing bowl. So it's all ready with lots of ice. So I've got okay, so I've got to I've got to drink this while I'm talking to you. You've got half an hour to drink the bottle. Oh my god, I've got half an hour to drink. I better start now. <laughs> I like the fact there was no sense of I can't drink it in half an hour. It was a meant to do it. Rosemary, it's popped. Hooray! Okay, here I go. I'm going to have this. I should have a lovely, handsome man pour it for me. You've got the pearl necklaces and everything. On. Oh, I did that for you. You look I, fabulous. I put no. I put that on. I was going to have a four layers, but I, of course I had to take some. Of, it wasn't that tasteful because there were so many pearls. So I thought, no, no. So I decided to make it a little tasteful. And you've got lippy on and everything. You're looking gorgeous. Oh, yes. Darling. That was all for you because I had to look at you earlier. So I quickly zoomed into my bedroom and put some red lippy on. <laughs> See, Lavoie is keeping people glamorous in lockdown. Well, that's what it's all about. I'll tell you a little story about that. Please do. As you know, I'm not a big makeup um, sort of doer. And, of course, uh, my sister-in-law is really, she always thinks it's absolutely ghastly. So, of course, I before I went, they live in this very smart place in Richmond, Richmond Park. So I thought... Before I go see it, I quickly nip into a, a beauty place and get a makeover. Which I did. And, she, and she said to me, Good, you've got makeup on. Because I couldn't get my makeup. Did you have the full works done? Oh, the full works done. I had everything done. It was so funny. Cheers, my darling. Cheers, my darling. Oh, I love it's your so nice to go. see you. I've been so beside nice. myself with excitement today. Oh my God. We should tell people. Now, I can't remember when that New Year's Eve was. Are we talking two years, three years? Oh, do you know, I can't remember, but it was a fabulous party. Wasn't it? So, I was in um, Chapneys and uh, the resort, and so was Rosemary. We I was. didn't know each other. And you were there for a while, I was there for a while, and we slowly got chatting, didn't we? Because your programme just come out your marigold hotel oh the marigold hotel just coming so it must be about three years ago must be and yeah. it was over christmas because i was doing pantomime and you were in there desperately trying to be good wasn't it because <laughs> yes you I was so that's right i was there for new year i came that's right in between new year to new year so i decided so i wasn't going to eat because i was actually just going off to america so i had to quickly lose some more weight as well well i'm gonna i'm gonna tell the, the real story here you were you did something where you were meant to be on some diet or something and between yes. you and me you yes. haven't quite stuck to it and your, your agent said you need to go to Chapman's and be good for two weeks shh, shh. you're letting out all my secrets how dare you and i'll never forget it was new year's eve and i said please join us for a drink we're having a little party with the gorgeous friends um from Chapman's. and you at the start of it you were brilliant you said well i've got to be good and i can't drink and because I'm, I've got to be sensible, and you were brilliant. And then fast forward to about two o'clock in the morning, it was and we're doing the birdie uh, song on the dance floor, and it was and I was, I, and I was so excited because Paul Young was there, and he's such yes. a nice chap, such a lovely chap. I just wanted him to serenade me, but I've got you, you can serenade but me. But you know what the amazing thing about Paul Young is? Paul Young last year toured and supported Cher in concert. Really? Is that an amazing gig to get? I mean, that's yeah. incredible. But I'm not surprised because he's such a lovely person. And he, you know, what is important, and you know, being in showbiz as I am, not in the same way, but you know, I love my pantomimes and I do all my pantomimes. Oh, you're like, showbiz, Rose. Oh, I love it. I love showbiz. So I was born to do showbiz. So, anyway, so uh, the thing is that. Um, 
he, he, it was like, you know, he just came across as just, I, I really loved him, his music when I was younger, but he just came across, and I was actually really quite in awe of him. But that's not what I was going to say. I was going to say something else. But, and his wife then, who was still with us, was so sweet. Yeah, of course. And, you know, she was absolutely adorable. And it was just, yeah, it was just a fab evening. It was, I'm trying to think who else was there without being... being oh, there was my from. lovely, there was the lovely old, what's his name, you know, who, um, uh, oh, you know, married, you know... Joe Swash? Joe Swash, lovely Joe. Joe Swash. Is lovely so Joe, I love Joe. Known Joe for years, actually. Uh, ben Cohen was there. The ben Cohen was there, yeah, he was there. Who else was there? all there. There we were all, yes, all the important people were there. And I got stuck on a table with some Russian woman that wouldn't speak to me. Do you remember? Oh, oh, on the end. I do remember. Let's not name any names. I don't know who no, she no, was, no, don't name I actually do remember. Maybe we, we kept trying, to be fair. But maybe we didn't we think kept we were trying to make conversation, but she really didn't want to be on a table with us, did she? <laughs> we weren't important enough. We weren't. We weren't. No, we just we weren't on that table. Enough. Who is the person you've met that you've been most starstruck by? Liza Minnelli. Who? Liza Minnelli. Oh, shut up. You know that is my absolute idol. I've never met her. Uh, I booked tickets to see her at the Palladium a few years ago, and I booked, I paid the stupid amount of money to meet her afterwards, and I thought, this is going to be the moment. I get the picture, I've met her, and she cancelled. She cancelled? She cancelled the show, oh, no. so I didn't get to go. Well, the, um, the only reason I got to see her was because doing the Alan Titchmarsh show, and she well, was there. Liza Minnelli on the Alan Titchmarsh she show. She was singing. She was singing. Oh, and so, I just doing a chat. They they gave her a lot of time too, which was lovely. Um, and well, someone sold that very well to an uh, American agent, didn't they? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So of course, do you have to see? I I was genuinely starstruck. And when I was just, I was just by her. Oh yeah, because she's brilliant, and you know she's so good. And there was something about her. Now, who else was I starstruck? Who else have I been starstruck by? Um, oh, there have been so many people I've been starstruck by. God, it's so always when they catch you at an event or something, and you're not expecting it, and you suddenly go, "Oh, that's." Have you ever done it when you've recognised always... them? But I don't always... realise them. You don't realise it's them, and then you've gone. Oh wow, that's actually that person. I'm trying to think of an example. That's the problem, exactly. You don't realize. But actually, I'm always surprised when they say they know me and love me. But I sort of because because I wasn't expecting that, because I think they're amazing, but to actually hear it, I think, what, you know who I am? <laughs> you actually oh, absolutely. Seriously. I'm always shocked. I'm always shocked. Who was that? Um, I'll never forget that woman who was doing Doctor Who at the time, and she was terribly famous. And um, you know, there's me. I don't oh, remember. Happy date. No. I got, and she said to me, she said, "Oh, Rosemary, I love your work. I love it. Oh, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous." And I said, "I love your work." And so it's all. So all in all, we are very. Um, you know, I think people are so talented out there, and you know. For me, I mean, like you are, you are so talented. You oh, really stop are. It. Oh, Talk no, about talent. no, don't argue with me. I'm not going to, I'm not going to stop it. You are, you are. I've been what watching you teach me. Ruby, now, I've been got Ruby. If I was to go on, ladder to lady. Yes. Where could I improve? Darling, there's nothing you need to improve. No. I'm going to put that as a clip on my website. Oh, we've got lots of questions, Rosemary. Do you mind? Go on, Lorraine. Questions? Did right, you Lorraine. Enjoy... Lorraine wants to know, Rosemary, did you enjoy doing the show Ladder to Lady? I loved that show. Did you enjoy uh, doing it? You know what? Loved it. Loved it. I, with all seriousness, I had a real quandary when they asked me to do it. And I tell you, I only got the job because I said I could teach anybody how to cook because they'd already asked loads of people. And they said, do you know, do you know this? There's this woman who I'd done loads of shows before. And they said she's got, um, oh, yes, we must keep drinking. Uh, keep drinking. Yeah, yeah. We've done this, these shows before. And um, but they just couldn't they couldn't teach them how to cook. So, of course. For me, um, I said, well, of course, give me anybody, I'll teach them how to cook. No problems. So I got the job 
uh, immediately they said I had a plum in my mouth. So it was fine. That's all they wanted. Well, I didn't think I had a plum in my mouth, but they said I had a plum in my mouth. So anyway, so to cut a long story short, I thought, well, who am I to tell people how to behave? You know, it's a sort of a moral thing with me. Who am I? But then I sort of thought about it and thought, well, okay. If we can, the whole premise was to be really strict, but also they can take away what they wanted to take away with. So I nearly didn't do it, but then I decided, you know, I'm going to do it. And that's but it. you bet, I love you it. I bet you took for granted, you were fabulous on it, straight off. I love you were oh, it. Thank you. And, and do you not think there's, there's a certain part, you probably went into that thinking, like you said, but what do, you know, what do I know or what can I tell people? Mm -hmm. But there'll be fundamental basics that you'd be like, you can't do that at the dinner table, but people don't realise if they've never been to a nice restaurant or an occasion. And it doesn't even have to be that. It's just having that awareness of how to hold yourself, be it a job okay. or an event. Or... This is so important. I look after, um, sometimes I, I, I sort of help students and things, and I take them to, to Michelin star restaurants. Oh, do you? And, and they come in, and they would say, there was one girl who was saying, my mother told me not to order beer. I said, why not? So I got the sommelier of that and um, said, you know, what beers have you got? He said, we've got this, a whole list of beers. So I said, listen, the only difference is you don't drink it out of a bottle in this restaurant. That's all. It's just more yeah. refined. And it looks nicer. And the other thing was, was they were obviously holding their knives and forks quite badly. And you know, badly. Which is fine, which is their choice. But I said, I want you to look just to see what I do. So I sort of, I sort of did the cutting, put in my mouth, yeah. put my knife and fork down, and I had a conversation with them. Then I took it up again, put it in, and then I said, "Well, from the way you do it, and the way I did it, what was the prettiest?" And they said, "Well, the way you did it." So I said, "Did you prefer it that way?" And they said, "Well, yes." And you know, they changed. And it was their choice, but I was trying to right. show them it was to do with like, having a conversation while you're eating, because I'm not doing the knives that's all well that's, all the see, that's amazing now what i find hard is canapes okay so you've got your your handbag or your clutch bag in one hand your drink in the other you're starving and the trays of food comes back so oh, i just say no now because i can't i can't work the drink and the bag and the food and the Do you know conversation. I agree. It is the most annoying thing under the sun, having all these things. I mean, the thing, the only canapes I like, the one finger canapes you put yeah, them in. That's mouth. when you go. The Those ones that have a dip, forget it. Forget I it. I agree. Without question. Without question. So I agree. It's awkward. You can buy these glasses with these little plates, actually, which you could do. But then oh, yes, you can. You can. Yes, you can. But then, of course, I think, oh, it's a bit naff, isn't it? You know, sort of. I I'm can't the smoked just the salmon, smoked salmon canapes, when people talk to you and they've got champagne and smoked salmon breath. Mm. That's mm. the worst, gentlemen. Oh, we've got another question. And by the way, Ashley wants to know, Rosemary, who would you love to have in a celeb version of Ladette to Lady? Do you know, I've actually asked to do this. Oh, really? I, yes, I said to them, I approached them once, I said, why don't we do a celeb one? Um, because it would be so interesting, really, really interesting yes. to see if people, how people could, would behave. So, oh, you could get a on there. I would have, um, gosh, go for it, go for it. Drink I, some champagne. No, oh, hang on, what's her name? No, I would have, oh, I'm terrible things. She's always, oh gosh, she changes her husband's all the time. Um, <laughs> well, whatever you say now is not going to be more offensive than that. But actually, Katie I, Price. You know what? Um, Katie she's Price. one of them. She's one of them. Katie Price. Katie. She's one of them. But the other one is the one she lives up north, and she's she has children. She's awfully sweet, but she. Katie yes, that's the one. She Katie definitely. Yes, yeah, she definitely. I think she'd love it. I think so she'd. How love many do you? How many do you need? Oh, you need eight. Eight, right? Kerry Katona, Katie Price. Um, okay. Who else should um, we have? Who else? Who else is? It's there? a difficult one because it's Lorraine Kelly. No, Lorraine. Lorraine. <laughs> Actually, I would just do it for fun, Lorraine. Yeah, Let's get have... Lorraine on. Let's have a Lorraine for fun. And it's the one that's really posh that that be like, why the hell have I been? Just with, this? with Joe, with who's married to Joe. Or to, um, oh, lovely. Katie Solomon. That's it, Katie Solomon. Katie She's Solomon. 
The thing is, they're all lovely people. Well, that's fine. You're lovely too. Well, then, you know, we can pretend we don't like them. So that's five. Oh, three are you still more. being tough with them? Hmm? Who oh, else? Three more. Oh, um, um, the one off Gogglebox. Um, Oh, um, I think all of them off Gogglebox. All, all of them. <laughs> right, right, we, we, we could do a Gogglebox, ladders to ladies. I would, do you know, I'd love to do Gogglebox. I think it's hysterical. Oh, yeah, we could do it together. We could, oh, my God, you can come to me here and we'll sit and watch television for five hours. Well, you could come to me and we could sit and watch it here. Oh, I could come to you. It'd be wonderful. As long as we're actually not even willing to leave the house after lockdown. <laughs> as long as we got plenty of champagne. Oh, Rosemary, let's do it. Oh, my gosh, I'd love it. But the thing is, you and I would never stop talking. Right, let's see if we've got any more questions. Uh, Lucy Blakemore. Oh, good, we're getting on to cooking. I wanted to get on to this. What's oh, right, okay. what's your favourite meal? What's your favourite meal to eat, Rosemary? Okay. Do you know, I absolutely adore Japanese. I adore. Yes, I I'm like a Japanese, Japanese girl. Absolutely. When well, Bobby, I tell it, but you're not. Well, when, <laughs> when Bobby I'm sorry, George, I don't know what your mother when, told you, but you're not Japanese. Bobby George, when Bobby George was with me in um in Japan, it was all he wanted was his burgers and chips. It was hysterical. Isn't Japan the most amazing oh, country? I love it. I just if I anyone who's never been. It's 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 nothing like you'd imagine, but it's everything you'd want it to be. It's. It's just the most inspiring country to visit. I agree. But you know the other thing I love? I love crispy bacon with baked beans and garlic in a baked potato. <laughs> I've never known anyone sell a baked potato with so much enthusiasm. Well, a crispy baked potato with yes. this gorgeous, what you do is you crisp up the bacon Yes. So it's really crispy. Then you pour in your tin of baked beans and you crush some garlic into it. And then you bake a potato that's really, as I say, crispy. And then you open it up and pour the baked beans and bacon inside garlic. With the garlic. I'll tell you a story about that. I went to see Swan Lake with the Nureyev from Fontaine. It's actually one of their last performances. I was oh my gosh, you, you saw Nureyev? I was 15, incredible. yeah. And I'll never forget, I came home from school. And I had a tin of baked beans. Oh, I'll tell you that in a minute. Uh, I had a tin of baked beans. And the thing was that I put 15 cloves of garlic in. And behind me, there were these ladies in the back who <laughs> said, there's the most dreadful smell of garlic here. <laughs> so I spent the second performance with my hands like that on my face. Anyway, the answer is, have I eaten a McDonald's? Have you ever eaten a McDonald's and do you have a favourite naughty, dirty, fast food? Oh, um, I've had a McDonald's, but the last time I tried to get a McDonald's was when I won a show and I came first. I didn't think it was out of all these... What show? Things. A cooking show? I was in the cooking show on ITV. Anyway, I won it. Three weeks. No, 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 no. <laughs> Yes, maybe I should go. So, anyway, so I was doing this cooking show, and I all sorts of things happened in between that. That's when I went over to New York, saw Trump, and all these. So, anyway, so then of course I um I was so hyped up with this program. I had three glasses of wine, my adrenaline. You know what it's like when the adrenaline kicks in. I was off the wall. I was so drunk. I hadn't eaten for days because I was so nervous. So, of course. I got into this great big limousine. It was hysterical. I had two people holding me like that, trying to get me back to the hotel. <laughs> well, all I wanted was a McDonald's. That's all I wanted. The chauffeur had to fix And I bet you did. I bet you did. No, I didn't, because the chauffeur... The drunken thing, the drunken thing of just saying, hello, that's uh, Yeah, exactly. Hello, Can you imagine a photograph with me and McDonald's drunk? <laughs> so he, he got me, and he pushed my head down and said, you're not getting out. Get back in. <laughs> so the, the thing is, these people got the chips for me from McDonald's. So I ended up, I think, in the foyer eating my chips on the on the floor. I'm not sure what I did. <laughs> I did something. <laughs> but you know when the adrenaline goes to you. Oh, do you know what? My hardest thing is when I'm touring around and we'll be doing some amazing shows somewhere in a theatre. 
and I've got to travel home and it's late. I haven't eaten. I can't eat before a show because of the nerves and the, the corsets and the singing. And So when the minute the show finishes, I've had all these amazing meet and greets and all these people. I'm on I'm, every time I do a show, it's like a party night. I want to go have food. Of course, the yeah. only thing that's open is McDonald's and KFCs and all the terrible stuff. It's, you're absolutely right. It's the only thing that's open after these things, and it's all that terrible stuff. But to be honest, if I was sober, to answer the other man, probably I wouldn't unless I was desperate. But I do know all my chefs love McDonald's. They have it for breakfast. Oh, really? Oh, do you know what? This is quite interesting. Do you know what the number one food... Now, I've got to get the event right. It's not, on. Is it, it's not Christmas Day. It's not Christmas Day. Is it Christmas Day or is it New Year's? There's something like Christmas on New Year. The number one food in Japan is KFC. No. Isn't that interesting? Yes. I'm no. Quiz. I was in no. There. Actually, do you know what? I'm disappointed. You've now disappointed me. Take it back. Take it back. I love Japan. Take it you back. You cannot karate chop me on a... On a Facebook video. Right, Della, Rosemary, did you enjoy filming The Real Marigold Hotel alongside actress Miriam Margulies? And did you like exploring India? Do you know, I loved it all. Miriam, I love Miriam. She is, she is such a good egg. She is totally misunderstood. She is a person who, who is just, she's so funny. And she, she and I really, we're very good, very close friends now and everything. Oh, and good. Oh yeah, we're very close. She is so funny, and um, we always email each other and do all this. And she's lovely, and we just got on so well. Oh, it really came across in that show. It came. Across oh yeah, the connection was amazing. Yeah, we loved it. But I'll tell you about Miriam. She always had to have the best room on the Marigold, and it really got my goat. So what happened was, she always bagged. Should I'm having that? I don't. And being the sort of person I am, said, "Oh, okay." Well, we got to Japan, and I thought, no way is she going to have the best room in Japan. So I went upstairs thinking, I know what room. I'm going to have that room, which was the best room. So I said, I want this room. Miriam said, no, I want it. It's mine. I said, no, I've got my suitcase on the bed. You can see it's my room. No, she was saying, no, I want it. So we carried on. She came in in the end because she knew I wasn't going to give it. Now, this is what happened. That was the room, the patio. The room to the patio uh, was, a, you know, had a gorgeous terrain out there. But you know who smoked all the time was Bobby George. So he had to walk through the, 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 the bedroom to get to the patio. Well, before I tell you what happened next, she went upstairs, another uh, thing of stairs. There was a whole suite with her own bathroom. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! I could have killed her! I ended up sharing a bathroom which kept on blocking with the two with Wayne Sleep and with Bobby. I couldn't, I went Hang on, you said you just connected a toilet that kept blocking with Wayne Sleep. Yeah, and I Wayne Sleep was in the toilet. <laughs> so, in the end, do you know what happened? I said to Bobby, Bobby, I couldn't stand it. He's such a gentleman. I said, would you like the room? Because it was the biggest room. I said, look, take the room. So he took the room and he got his veranda. I ended up with the smallest room and I, I was like a student. I could not even unpack. So they have photographs with my all my clothes and the luggage. I wasn't able to unpack because it was so tiny. It was actually quite funny. I can't actually, believe she found it. No, that was in China. Actually, that happened in China, not Japan. Oh, my God. Right, Chris wants to know, what TV shows have you been watching during isolation? He's actually oh. put since insulation, but I think you mean All right. insulation. All right, okay, definitely insulation. Right, I've been I've been watching so many films, so many capture. Um, ask for soul, ask for soul. Breaking. Oh, I haven't Bad. watched any of that. Is that good? Oh, it's incredible. Breaking Bad. I think I've watched oh, about love, love forty hours of this. I don't know. Yes. Then I've watched all soul ones. I've watched every single one. It's actually, to be honest with you, it's one of the most brilliant things. I have watched so many films. Um, it's cost me a fortune on Sky. It's cost me, it's completely, I, we've been watching films every night. And of course, I love my Corrie. You know I love my Corrie. Everybody knows I love But you see, Corrie's got a bit boring lately. So, you know, 
I love my Gory, but I do I sort of catch it up. I sort of fast forward it, but you know, I'll carry on. Yeah, of course. Do you think we were having we were having this conversation today? Do you think when the soaps come back, they're just gonna ignore the whole corona thing and just carry on with their storylines? Or because they can't address it, can they? They can't lock everyone in their houses in the soaps. Oh. It's terrible. Do you know it's a really interesting question? I think. Um, because somebody must have died on the street, seriously. I mean, yeah, it was a sort of, you know, it's a terrible thing what's happened. So in, in reality, I think they'll try and keep it real. I hope they do. In yeah, I hope they do. They can't just ignore it, can they? They can't ignore it because people have been amazing. National talking, health. About, talking about Starstruck, I did Michelle Collins's birthday. We talked about this last week. And I got to meet Roy. The guy that played Roy in Coronation Street, you know Roy's roles. Oh, yes, Roy, and I was so I was starting. You were starting Roy, and he was petrified, and I threw myself at him for a picture. That is so cool. I love I it. Got this picture of him just going. Oh, <laughs> right, we've got a question from William Rosie. Yes. Can you remember the first ever thing you cooked? to then decide you wanted to make a career out of it? Oh, that's a hard question. Well, that actually, that was hard, but actually it's a really good question. Because it, it never entered my mind to make a career out of cooking. Never. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. What did you want to be? Well, I was, okay, to begin with, I wanted to be an actress. Then I wanted to be, I wanted to be a nurse, then an actress, desperate. Well, you're then, more sort of an actress. And you oh, show I show you are much better an actress than yes. somebody actresses are. Then I just, I loved art. Then I wanted to um, do cooking. But the cooking was always a hobby, not a career. But then I sort of turned my hobby into a career. It was weird because I was an interior designer. I went to art college for five years. Oh, wow. So I did interior design. And, um, yeah, I'm terrible. I was terrible at it. But I worked in the city. <laughs> I, with, I worked with architects, so I did my, my training. Why were you terrible at it? I was just terrible. I was all... The house looks beautiful behind you. No, but I was... Oh, I've got a few paintings here, but you can't really see. I think you've improved on interior design now. Look, look I've got my big... Do you like the big apple? It's got a huge apple. Look, I love my big apple. I've heard that about you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, that's amazing. That's a big apple. It's lovely big apple. It's a big apple. So anyway, the thing is that no, I love. Oh, I'm in the wrong place now. It's all right. It's a nice lamp. Oh uh, no, Martin! I'm in the wrong no, place. Just move it round. Can you just keep? How do I move it? You I can can't do this yourself. It. You don't need Martin. Well, you don't I, need Martin. Now, oh no! There we go. I need Martin. Now sit back. Oh, dang it! Oh, oh, there we. Go. Yes, that's you're it. doing it yourself. Oh, no, what? I'm in. Cool. Oh, I'm in. She doesn't need you. In fact, that's better because your friend looks like you've got lampshades as earrings. Oh, I've got. <laughs> Who's Martin? Is that your assistant? Martin, my assistant. He's lovely. You don't. You've been watching Coronation Street. I love you've been Martin. Watching him in a magic box, have you? You've got what? You have a Speak English, girl. Speak English. Speak English. <laughs> <laughs> the champagne's kicking in. Go on, say that again. <laughs> I said the champagne's kicking in. We're both losing the plot. Yeah, we are. We are. Any more questions? Keep going. No, I've got Keep lots going. of questions. Keep going. Now, oh. do you know what? I watched your Instagram. If you haven't seen... Oh, oh yes, my Instagram. Instagram. You need to follow Rosemary on Instagram because her stories, she cooks things and it's and it's step by step on her story and it's... And it's easy and achievable but incredible and you did i think it was last week or the week before a flourless chocolate cake i did just by watching it was better than porn rosemary you're joking seriously incredible. wow well that's cool that's a that's a compliment that's a massive to make it it looks incredible well i have to know i'm having such a you know i've only just i've only just got instagram i've only got 309 Nine, 3,900 people. I want more though because I've only just started and it doesn't seem very much. I go on to people and they've got a million. They've got hundreds so of that. That's stupid. Yes, but Rosemary, the difference is because we're the same in that sense. 
they only live and breathe for Instagram. And all they'll do is all these silly quips and things that they couldn't speak for half an hour like we have, Rosemary. <laughs> no, I suppose they can't. No, I know. <laughs> I'd rather have a skill outside of social media and be on it than just my skill be social media. So remember you know, that. Darling. I will remember. That's actually good. That's a good tip because I've been really, really upset thinking, oh, no, I want it to be 3,000. And it won't move. So if anybody's out there, will you put me up, please? Joanne? Joanne? There's normally two reasons. Someone told me this. There's two reasons why people follow someone on Instagram. It's either because you want to sleep with them or you want to do what they do skill-wise. So you're obviously have got three thousand people that want to sleep with you. <laughs> Don't worry, I could do one at a time. That's all right. <laughs> well, there we go. That's <laughs> <not> busy. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe two to push. <laughs> well, we've got a question. Um, who didn't Rosemary like uh, when you were in the jungle? Oh, ah, right. That's a lovely question. I love. They dig dirt. Oh, David followers, don't they? Hay. I love David. David Hay. No, he says, who didn't you like? Oh, well, there was one person I didn't like. Everybody knows who I didn't like. God, you know, seriously. He's not my son. Who? Oh. Yeah, he wasn't my favourite. Well, well I'm going to be quiet. Why are you going quiet? He was fun, Eric was. He didn't mean to. But because genuinely, probably underneath, he was a very sweet person. But he was actually, he made fun of people. And I don't like that when you're nasty about people. Because people, everybody deals with things in different ways. And there's never a right way or no wrong way. And I genuinely feel that if you're going to judge another human being, you judge yourself first. And I think anybody's allowed to be anything because that's the way it should be. And mm -hmm. if Helen Flanagan wanted to put lots of um, brown on her face that was her choice and i thought it was cool and if if um <laughs> you know i think anything goes it doesn't matter and i just don't like somebody who puts their opinion onto other things thinking they should be a certain type of person it's wrong yeah. it's, it's just it. wrong it's like when my children were young i said if you be a punk you've got to do it really well because i think punks are really decorative and gorgeous people i think it could be really decorative but i said you don't do it half measures you do it really well Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good parenting. Because at least yeah. then if they're going to be a rebel, they do it really Oh, yeah. Really well. You're a rebel. You have to be a rebel. I was a rebel. Yeah. yeah. Was I a rebel? No, I wasn't. I am now, but I wasn't when I was younger. I'm that's... one of those terrible people that's rebellious when they're older, and they're just annoying. Well, were you... <laughs> when I was younger... Oh, no, when I was younger, I was, you know, yes, sir, no, sir, and wanted to be following the crowd and all that stuff, so boring. I was naughty. I was... Especially when I was yeah. at college and I got my theatre agent and I was wanting to work in theatre. You're told you've got to look like this and sing like this and dance like this. And I got to the point where I thought, well, no, because all the people, look at Liza Minnelli, you know. She's amazing. Not the, best, not the best singer, doesn't look like anyone else on the planet, but she's had the best career. Because oh, she's got she, and she's a super and She's a brand. She made herself. That's what it's all about. I think you've got to be confident. You know, I mean, the thing is, my brand is I'm a bossy boots, but I'm, I'm not really. <laughs> no, you're not. You're not at all. You know, when I went back, when I did Brighton Theatre Royal, I did that the Saturday night, and then the theatres closed on the Sunday. I was the last show in Brighton Theatre Royal before the whole lockdown and the closure happened. And I did Pantomime there years ago. Hang on, the poster's there. 2000 and six or something um and when i was there i remember thinking one day i'm gonna come back here and you know and i'll be in my own show or something when i went there with the whole of water i was so proud of my own achievement that i knew i'd sat in a dressing room three floors up wishing I could have my own show and then I was in dressing room one only because I'm the only one on the stage I always put myself in dressing room one um and I thought this is it for me that was the biggest career success because it was personal it was about you know that's very special and it was more special 
That um, is very, very special, isn't it? And, and that's the theatre closed the day after, so I don't know if it was a good show or if it was to do with Corona, but. I don't think it was you. <laughs> I definitely don't think it was you. Look, we've got another question from Mark. We have. Mark, you're so well travelled, but where would you look to go when this is all over and you're allowed to get out? Oh, I'll tell you. Are you saying abroad? If you were saying, I, I don't want to go abroad, I want to stay in this country. And I want to go out to dinner and party and have my cocktails. I am longing to get some noise. I, I need some life in me. I love to go to buzzy places where there's lots of noise. Um, love it. Love it. Do you know what? That's really interesting. I've never thought about it in terms of noise. And you're absolutely right. I just want to sit in a busy coffee shop or a busy restaurant yeah. and hear that yeah. hubbub of people. Yeah, it's noise. It's being. It's it's actually life. And it's I want life. to feel life around me. And because it's really... Because being isolated for so long, and we're all trying to do our thing. I'm doing a lot of, you know, Instagram and a lot of all this. But we're trying. Oh, Rosemary, what you're doing, if you're new to Instagram, you've got it. You're nailing it. Keep doing what you're doing, and the followers will just go up. It's that, do, you know, do you know that means such a lot to me? I cannot tell you that means so much. No, but it's, it's, it's so hard in these times oh, for yeah. all of us that are in the showbiz world. We are oh. reliant on social media and you can see you are standing in your kitchen you don't know if you're doing the right thing you'll be making a cake thinking is anyone going to watch this anyone going to do this but i cannot mm -hmm. tell you how many people do watch it appreciate it and need it so keep oh, doing what oh, you're doing oh it's so nice well i'm trying to do something for alzheimer's now because alzheimer's is really important because there's so many people out there so i'm doing i'm going to do cupcake day i'm going to be making a pie this week um i've put on the leftover puff pastry today uh made some palmiers so i'm trying and i'm going to get, i've got a big i've been barbecuing and doing all this sort of thing yes for, for canada actually it's for canada oh, it's a long way to send a barbecue oh <laughs> i've got the canadian barbecue i've got a great big beast of a barbecue it's Have you? huge it's a man's barbecue. It's a man's barbecue. But it's so cool. It's a mean barbecue, Rosemary. It's so cool. It's a mean barbecue. And I love my barbecue. And I've also got, which I'm so excited about, my workstation. So I can have my drinks on there. I can have all my bits on there. I absolutely love it. Can't wait for you to come down and see it, actually. Oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait to see you. I know. I mean, I've, kept you, I've kept you longer than I said I would. Oh, God, I've I loved that. it. I don't want to leave you. We've got one more question. Rosemary, you're full of energy and so lovely. What's your top tip for having a zest for life? Oh, sweet oh, Aunt John. That's so lovely. Do you know what? Yeah. Number one, it doesn't cost anything to smile. It's free. Number two, I think just be happy. There's a, I know this sounds crazy, but actually it's, um, it's a funny thing. There's a saying saying, when you're sad, I'm afraid you cry alone. But when you're happy, the world is happy with you. Now, that is a saying. Now, unfortunately, that's not fair. But if you smile at people and you give people the confidence, it's very interesting. I like to make people feel important. I like people because people are special. And I think it's very important that you, ne you need to... Um, for me, it's if you've got so, it's very easy. If you've got somebody who's quite a negative person, you turn it all around. You say, "Gosh, I think you're great." Gosh, I think you're. Suddenly, the whole thing changes. And for me, being happy, Zesta, is making somebody feel good. Actually, well, that is, you know, raising a glass to that. Cheers to that, my darling. Do you know what? I just think you have been so amazing tonight. We could oh, chat for well. hours. I could have gone on and on and on. You can imagine oh. what it's like when me and Rosemary get together. <laughs> Nobody else gets a word in. Can I come again? Yes, of course you can. Please, there was so much to talk about. We've got so much. I'm sure, now listen, I cannot tell you. When we had um, Michelle last week, these gorgeous followers that watch my page we have thousands of views rosemary if you're watching this go on rosemary schrager's instagram and give her a follow because she oh, wants it you. she wants you to see her <laughs> over puff pastry 
I do, I do. Thank you, Lawan. I don't want to say bye. I don't want to say, want to say goodbye either. I'm going to continue drinking the champagne and finish the bottle. Right, so I tell you what, we'll come back on about eight o'clock and we'll see how you're faring up. Oh, okay then. That's a deal. <laughs> that, that's, actually, are you still on at eight? Yes. Well, I won't be on at eight o'clock. No. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do now is we do a little a quiz where other people come on and they win prizes and I'm drunk, so I'm not getting anything right. 7.30. At 7.30, can we just check back in with you and see how the champagne's doing? Absolutely no props. I'll be finished on the second bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you at 7.30. I love you so much. Cheers, my darling. Bye.